Um, thank you, thank you, Susan, and thanks for the great work you do at the uh, Pace Women's Justice Center. Um, I want to also uh, give a shout out to Sergeant uh, Devlin from the Westchester County Department of Public Safety for organizing today's event.
and what we um, we focused on, or were focused on by colleagues in law enforcement, is that there were almost 20,000 hospitalizations in year 2013 of people with heroin overdoses or prescription opioid overdoses, and people were overdosing and dying all over the state. There was there is a drug that can stop people from dying from an overdose called naloxone, but it really wasn't being made available to the folks on the front line, the patrol officers who are usually almost always the first people to encounter this sort of situation. So we took some more of those federal forfeiture funds uh, and made available more than 50,000 naloxone kits and we'll continue to fund them for any department that wants them. It can be nasally injected and it literally stops people from dying from an overdose. It just gets in and inhibits the, uh, the chemicals that, that make you stop breathing, which is how you die from an opioid overdose. And this program only started last fall. And police departments around the state have already saved more than 100 lives with this great, amazing drug, naloxone. And so we're going to continue to fund that. But those are just a couple of examples of the, the collaboration, the partnership. And believe me, we value good ideas. So you're going to be hearing length from Gary Brown, who's the head of my Westchester office, and in my view, the, the most knowledgeable, certainly one of the most knowledgeable, I think probably the most knowledgeable person about scams and fraud against senior citizens. We have a whole series of programs to tell you about for that. Um, but we are uh, we're always open to new ideas. We like hearing from people, we like brainstorming. Uh, you know, we, there's enough credit for everyone. If you, if you have success, there's enough credit for everyone. If you have failure, uh, no one wants to take responsibility, but it's better to try. And we, we, don't believe, we don't believe that fear of failure should stop you from trying something that may do a lot of people a lot of good. So today, we're here to partner in a different way. Um, and this is to do some training with you, as Gary is, and is doing around the state of New York, on the issue of elder fraud. Um, a 2013 study found that 14% of seniors in New York have reported being victims of some type of abuse, and fraud is the most common type. I think I think the number is actually higher. But if you consider this, one of the challenges of these this work we all do is we tend to focus on. You see so many scams and you see so many schemes that sometimes I walk into a place and the first thing that pops in my mind is, uh oh, that could be a scam, which you know not the healthiest way to live your life, I suppose, but it's something that comes with the territory. But seniors in particular. Uh, are make attractive targets because they've worked hard their whole their whole lives. They've saved up some money, usually have money in the bank, often have assets such as a home, uh, and they are um, they tend to be a little more isolated. And there are a, a pool of people who are fraudsters who all they will do is scam seniors. It's called it's called the sort of identity fraud. But people choose certain groups of people, as we'll, you'll see. It gets even more focused than that. So MetLife Insurance Company estimated the financial loss to seniors in America for financial abuse at almost $3 billion a year. So that's that's a lot of money. Um, we made it a priority to crack down on elder fraud, and last year, we, we give you a couple examples, we busted the head of a Korean social service agency in New York City who was scamming seniors by promising them access to affordable housing, um, and he solicited um, something like $800,000 from groups of seniors supposedly depositing them on apartments. He acted actually there were no apartments, he just depositing in his bank account. But this case bore several of the classic hallmarks of this kind of identity fraud, fraud against seniors. He preyed on elderly immigrants with limited English who were in his own ethnic community and established trust that way. And that's something that we have to be very, very alert to. Uh, thinking that these would be the least likely people to report them to the authorities, and he was able to get away with a pretty um, uh, brazen scam. I mean, he's you know, selling people deposits on apartments, and there are no apartments. It's not like this was, you know, he had apartments, but they didn't own them or something like that. And he didn't have apartments at all. He chose the victims uh, who were most likely to trust him because of the ethnic connection. Another scammer we busted up the river from here in Dutchess County was an insurance agent who stole uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars from an elderly couple by soliciting them for investments that didn't exist, but he met them through their church. So once again, the scammers will go where you feel the most uh, the most bond, the most common bond with them. They will try and get into communities, and people figure, well, I can trust someone in my church, or I can trust someone 
who is a part of my ethnic community. And um, uh, this guy uh, scammed him out of the money, we got we busted and we got the money back. And I also would urge you that as you go forward, and we do this now, but it's something that, that I hope you'll participate in also, it's really important to do education and crime prevention as well as law enforcement. And this is something that I, I'm a very strong believer in. There's a lot of debate about things like, you know, broken windows policing. Broken windows policing is about crime prevention. Public order maintenance is about crime prevention. And education is an incredibly important part of crime prevention. So it's it's good to catch a scammer, but if you prevent a scam from taking hold, that's much better. Um, we have a program called Smart Seniors that Gary will talk to you about and it, to educate seniors about scams. We have Smart Seniors, Smart Investors, program that focuses specifically on investments. And um, we have a new program that uh, other states are now emulating called the uh, Grandkids Against the Grandparents Scam. And the Grandparents Scam, I'm sure you know people who are victims of this. Uh, a criminal uh, will call an elderly person, or email an elderly person, but, but often this is done by phone, claiming to be a grandchild in need of help. Uh, I just got arrested in Mexico, and please don't tell mom and dad and I need you to wire money. Any, anyone know any, anybody here know anybody who's had some, some variation of that? So it's a, um, it's a scam when a friend of you, mine, emails me or someone did claim me to have lost all their money in England and I should wire money. I can tell this was something where they just hacked into the person's list of every friend. But when they know enough, they gain enough information about the identity, the name, or the grandchild, and maybe your address and things like that, it's much more effective. They, they panic people and people don't think about it. So what we figured out that we can do is we set up a training program to encourage kids going to middle schools and high schools to meet with their grandparents and have brochures on it, to talk to them about this possibility of a scam and to establish some uh, questions and answers they would do so that the grandparents know it's not their own grandchild. So this is a kind of creative approach that uh, we try to bring to bear, and Gary, uh, who will speak to you at length about this, uh, is an expert on this. But one thing I can guarantee you in your careers, um, criminals will always be coming up with new ways to con people. And I often think that if they would just take that creativity and apply it to some lawful enterprise, they'd probably be most, a lot of them be doing fine in life when it comes to fraudsters and scammers and that particular element of uh, the criminal that you're gonna be dealing with. But it's a pleasure to have you here. It's an honor to be here with you as you embark on these incredibly important careers. And I hope you always have pride in the work you do and in the Brotherhood of Law Enforcement that you are joining now. But I, I'm going to now turn it over to the head of my Westchester office. I hope you all come to know and work with over the years. But who is, again, one of, in my view, the state's leading expert on fraud against senior citizens. Gary Brown, but I want to thank you, and I wanted to come here personally to thank you for this and congratulate you on, uh, on moving forward and doing this terrific work. Thank you. Thank you.